Okay, this one's gonna be a pretty fun one. So we have this pipe and this is kind of a special pipe because at the entrance of the pipe, so here on the left, the cross-sectional area of this pipe is a square and the sides of the square are L, so the area of this cross-section is L squared. But at the end of the pipe, somewhere in the middle, it starts turning into this circular pipe. So at the very end where the fluid is going to be exiting, this is a circular cross-sectional area. And the diameter of that opening or that exiting hole is L. So the area is gonna be whatever pi r squared turns out to be. And through this pipe, we have an ideal fluid that is flowing. So it's entering here on the left and exiting here on the right. And the question asks us, what is the fluid speed exiting the pipe? So what is the velocity of that fluid exiting the pipe at the circular cross-sectional area end. Now, because this is an ideal fluid, we know that the flow rate Q, which is meters cubed per second, that's the unit of flow rate, that is going to be constant all throughout the system. So whatever volume of fluid is entering the pipe is also leaving the pipe. In other words, Q1, which is the flow rate at the square end, so this is Q1 right here, uh, that's going to be equal to Q2, which is right here. So the flow rate entering is going to equal the flow rate exiting. And what do we know about flow rate? Well, Q is equal to velocity times the cross-sectional area. Q1, which is velocity one times A1, is equal to velocity two times A2. And our question is asking, what is this V2? What is the velocity at the second point? Or in other words, what is the velocity here that's exiting the pipe? Well, I think because we know the cross-sectional areas of both ends of the square and the circle, I think a good place to start would be to calculate what A1 and A2 are, and then find velocity of two in terms of velocity one. Why? Because nowhere in this example do we actually have a numerical value for the velocity entering the pipe. So we just have to solve for V2 in terms of V1. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So the area of one, which is here on the left, is a square. And the dimensions of that square are L by L. So the area of one is going to be L squared. Now the area of two is going to be a circular cross-sectional area. So it's going to be pi times R squared. Well, what is R in this case? If the diameter of the pipe is L, then the radius is going to be L divided by two. So A2 is pi times L over two squared. And if we solve that out, we are left with pi times L squared over four. Okay, cool. So now that we have area one and area two, which is this pi L squared over four, we can plug those values into this continuity equation and solve for V2 in terms of V1. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So V1, I'll leave as V1, and then A1 is that L squared, and this is equal to V2 times A2, and A2 we found to be pi times L squared over four. Now, if I multiply both sides by four, I get four times velocity one times L squared is equal to V2 times pi times L squared. And now if I divide both sides by pi times L squared, then on the left-hand side, I have four times V1 times L squared, all divided by pi times L squared. And that is equal to V2. And you'll notice that L squared cancels out. So what we're left with is V2 is equal to four times V1 over pi. And if we want to solve this out numerically, this is roughly equal to 1.2732 times V1. So there we go. The velocity at two, the exiting velocity of this fluid, is about 1.27 times the entering speed V1. And if you think about it, this makes sense because the area of the circular end, so the area right here, is a little bit smaller than this L squared square cross-sectional area. And so because this area is a little bit smaller, 
the velocity has to be higher. Why? Well, it's in order to ensure that the same amount of volume that's entering the system is also leaving the system.